across that. Can you walk us through what's that threshold? Is it, are you looking at TSH? Are you looking at a T3 threshold? What are you looking at to say, hey, I need thyroid hormone? So for me, I looked at both of those. So yeah. while TSH, of course, is important, if you know, with Hashimoto's, that can sometimes fluctuate. Yeah, and if my T4 and T3 was normal, I wouldn't have done it. But I had the very textbook pattern. My TSH was elevated slightly. My T4 was slightly low. And what's slightly and my, above three? Uh, my TSH was 4.5. Mm. So it was out of the optimal range. My total T4 was five point. I mean, we're going back years now, but it was under six. It was like 5.8. Yeah. Um, and my T3 was yeah. 70. My total okay. T3. So yeah. What was your T3 free? Uh, like two point seven. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but yeah, it was so under the three lower point. side for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and because of the pattern, like if it was just one of the numbers, then I would think, okay, maybe I'll just wait and see. And I've tried a lot of natural stuff, and I've tested, and the numbers were always showing up that way. So it wasn't just a you know because. The TSH will fluctuate. Things can happen from day to day. This was consistent month after month. And knowing that we need thyroid hormone for every cell in our body. And this is something that people may sometimes not realize because we think, okay, thyroid is important for our metabolism. It's important for temperature control, but there's just so much more than that. We need it for our brain. We need it for our feet. I mean, we need it for our gut, for everything. And I actually realized wait a minute, it, I'm being so hard-headed here. Like I'm going to do things natural. I'm not going to go on this. Meanwhile, I'm actually harming my body. If I don't have enough thyroid hormone, then my gut's not going to heal the way that it's supposed to. And other things are not going to work. And I've tried a lot of natural stuff. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying anything against natural stuff. I, that's always my first resort with everyone. Um, it's just that because I've had Hashimoto's for a while and my thyroid was damaged due to it, I need it. Not everyone does, but you know, it's just looking at everything and weighing it out. I think it's important because sometimes people can you know, go too much one way and then kind of forget about everything else on the other side. Yeah. A lot of people come into this thyroid game and they've kind of caught their thyroid or their immune system beating up their thyroid like 10 years into this relationship. And it's like, okay, you've been beating me up for like 10 years and there may be some functional tissue that's not quite producing that hormone like it was, you know, a decade ago. So that's where you kind of have to replace things. But a lot of times, you know, you may be able to replace some of that functional tissue by doing all the things that we, we've talked about. We, well, in the thyroid summit we talked about, but gluten and the leaky gut and supporting some of these nutrients. But sometimes there's there's kind of a gap, right? And that's kind of where you have to really be real, look at the TSH, the look how much is the brain talking, and then look at the actual hormones and say, hey, can, are we at least getting to mid-range or so? And if we're not, then we got to look at uh, bumping that up, especially if we have low thyroid symptoms like your cold hands, your cold feet, maybe thinning eyebrows, mood issue, motility. What kind of, what were your low thyroid symptoms personally? Uh, cold hands and feet. Yeah. Um, hair loss, but not so much loss where like, you know, it's falling out. It was just really thin and brittle. Thinner. Loss of volume. And, yeah. And you know what was interesting too? It never grew past my shoulders. It was hmm. just like, the, and when I was younger, it did. And then it just stopped. Like it would get here and that's it. And since uh, then, you know, my hair is, well, I've cut it recently, but it's way past my shoulders now. So that was kind of an interesting thing. I did have a little bit of the eyebrow thinning, fatigue, irregular cycles, issues with motility. I mean, not terrible, but just, you know, things just were not 100%. And when I optimized that, it all just completely aligned. And was there like, as you went through kind of like adding various things in and dressing various systems, was there a couple of things that was like, oh, this really accelerated this or this really accelerated that? Um, I mean, before doing thyroid medicine, I did a lot of stuff to really balance my body. So cleansing out the yeast, I had a lot of candida, a lot of mercury so and a lot of that copper. Out. Yeah. Clearing the candida was huge. I mean, I had a lot of IBS symptoms, which got so much better. The motility stuff was still a little bit off, which the thyroid helped with, but overall the distension, the gas, the bloating, I mean, that mm -hmm. got way better with the candida. I had mm -hmm. a ton of copper and a ton of mercury and that was not an easy road. I mean, it was probably a year to year and a half process, uh, probably even more like two years of detoxing that. And I did a combination of some chelation um, along with some other methods. Um, so that really helped a lot too. That's great. Excellent.